Hi there, it's Brad Hornby here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Anyway, CFL fans, how many times have you heard the real season doesn't begin until after Labor Day? Raise your hand. That's what I thought. So anyway, I figure going into Labor Day weekend here, I think it's time to revisit my original predictions where I figured each team was going to finish in the standings and who was eventually going to be hoisting the Grey Cup at the Brick Field at Commonwealth Stadium at the end of November. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, welcome back. I think it's time to revisit my original 2018 CFL predictions and uh, who I ultimately think is going to be the Grey Cup champion at the 106 Grey Cup in November at the Brickfield at Commonwealth Stadium in Edmonton because my mood for all many teams has changed now heading into Labor Day weekend than it was at the start of the season. And also what's been unique with this season is that many players, especially big names, have moved throughout the league. I mean, I definitely made a take on the Johnny Manziel trade because I was just stunned that he got traded and how much the return was and for an unproven commodity. But uh, once again, I'll break down uh, my outlook on each team and where I think they'll finish, and then I'll break down the uh, the bracket for the Grey Cup playoffs and who ultimately I think will be hoisting the Grey Cup this season. So first I'll recap what I said in the original video going out east from bottom to top. I did originally think the Montreal Alouettes was going to finish fourth at 5-13. and 13. The Hamilton Tiger Cats were going to finish third at 8-10. and 10. The Ottawa Red Blacks were going to finish second at 10-8. Uh, and 8. And I had the Toronto Argonauts finishing first in the east with a 12-6 and 6 record. And now, if we go uh, west, I have the BC Lions in 5th at 7-11. And, and then I have the Saskatchewan Rough Riders at 4th at 10-8. And, and then I have the Winnipeg Blue Bombers at 3rd at 11-7. And, and then I have the Calgary Stampeders 2nd at 12-6. And, and then I have the Edmonton Eskimos winning the West Division with a 13-5 and five record. And then setting up the uh, bracket here with Edmonton being first in the West and Toronto being first in the East, they get by to their respective division finals. And then out, out East, the Ottawa Red Blacks would host the Eastern semifinal. And then out West, Calgary would host the Western semifinal. And then Calgary would have, be play, would have played the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in the Western semifinal because they were third in in the in the West. And the one quirk in the CFL is that they have a crossover rule where if one team from one division has a greater record than the other. For example here for the Eastern semifinal I had the Saskatchewan Rough Riders going to play the Ottawa Red Blacks and not the Hamilton Tiger Cats because the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, even though they were fourth in the West, they were ten and eight. The Hamilton Tiger Cats were 8 and 10, third in the East. That would knock them out of the playoffs. And Saskatchewan would take their spot to be third in the in the East in the playoff bracket. So then I had Ottawa playing the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, and the winner of that would go on to play in Toronto. And how I had the bracket going for my original videos, I had the Ottawa Red Blacks beating the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, so setting up an Eastern final, the Toronto Argonauts, and the uh, Ottawa Red Blacks. And then out west, I had the Calgary Stampeders beating the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, setting up yet another Battle of Alberta for the Western final, where the Calgary Stampeders would be going to Edmonton to play in the Western final. And then in the uh, divisional finals, I had the Toronto Argonauts beating the Ottawa Red Blacks, for the Toronto Argonauts to get back to the Grey Cup in 2018. And then out west, I had the Edmonton Eskimos beating the Calgary Stampeders for that Edmonton Eskimos to go to, or actually in this case, 
have the Emden Eskimos stay right where they are and lay at the Grey Cup at home in Emden. So I had Emden and Toronto playing at the Grey Cup at the Brickfield at Commonwealth Stadium. And I predicted that the Emden Eskimos was going to bring home the Grey Cup at home in November this year. But that's what I said at the start of the season. That was then. This is now. Now I think it's time to bring on my new Eastern, Fon Eastern Division predictions. As I definitely saw a lot of changes from my predictions to now. So bring on... My new predictions for the Eastern Division. So now in fourth place in the East, I feel a little bold to say this, but I actually think the Toronto Argonauts are now going to finish fourth in the Eastern Division. Because right now, I mean, obviously they're missing Ricky Ray with his injury, but I think it's more than just Ricky Ray. I mean, I thought that the uh, Toronto Argonauts were going to be the the class of the East, but, uh, I mean, they still got big-name players. I mean, they were able to keep James Wilt Jr., and there was speculation that Ricky Ray is going to retire, but he definitely came back, and, and unfortunately he, he had a bad injury with a concussion, but uh, it uh, hasn't really worked out. Or It's hard to say who's the star, who's the quarterback right now in Toronto because... Uh, James Franklin was brought in for insurance and potentially be the new starting quarterback for the future for the Toronto Argonauts. But Mark Tressman said that McLeod Bethel Thompson, or Macbeth they call him, is uh, close to being at the same level. And McLeod Bethel Thompson actually has won one game while pulling out of the fire. I mean, it's hard to say who's going to be the quarterback going to the second half because. Uh, despite Ricky Ray actually still being with the team now that he's out of the hospital. I mean, they're still thinking that uh, he's not going to play again this season with his concussion. But despite, you know, they have big-name players like, uh, you know, S.J. Green, and actually they also recently signed Deron Carter from who Saskatchewan released him. And then the rear Posey, who actually just got cut from the NFL, maybe he'll could come back, but uh, they're also missing Bear Woods on defense, but I, right now from what I see from the Toronto Argonauts, uh, I think they're going to actually finish last in the, the Eastern Division. I could see them with, uh, you know, I'll give them a 7-11 record. I mean, they're, they have three wins up to this point, but uh, I'm, I'm actually surprised I'm going to put this team in third place, but uh, I got the Montreal Alouettes now thinking they're going to finish third in the, uh, the East Division. But I'll throw this out here right now. They will not make the playoffs because the West is still much stronger. And the fourth place team that I have in the West is still going to have a better record than the third place team in the East. So despite me having the Montreal Alouettes now in third, they will not be in the playoffs. But I've been impressed how the Montreal Alouettes have uh, have improved. I mean, basically from the start of the season to now. I mean, I mean, Eck right now, Antonio Pipkin has been their quarterback the last three games. And originally he was in camp, and then he got released because they had guys like Drew Willey and uh, you know Matt Schiltz and all these injuries, and then eventually. They brought in Johnny Menzel from uh, from Hamilton, and uh, well, he had one crappy game, and then he looked all right in the second game. Antonio Pipkin has definitely stepped up because Johnny Menzel was out for the last couple of games with an injury with with concussion, but he's now back on the sideline. But uh, Tony Pipkin, he definitely has some upside, and they also brought in Darius Bowman, who after he got his release from Edmonton, Winnipeg had him, and then he got traded to uh, the Montreal Alouettes. But uh, I'm starting to see some positives with the Montreal Alouettes, which is kind of surprising considering all the, you know, the moves they made in the off season. Still, the jury's still out if Mike Sherman is going to be, you know, is he the coach to lead the Montreal Alouettes in the future? And then Cavis Reed, the general manager. I mean. He, he spent all this money on the defense, but uh, 
the reason why I think the defense is looking a little better now is because the offense is actually looking better and you don't have the defense out the whole game but uh, I had to say they st Montreal Wets I mean they still got pieces I mean they got uh, Darius Bowman who might still have some still some stuff left in the tank and BJ Cunningham I mean Terrell Sutton uh, has still been their running back but he's out for six games but uh, William Steinbach is showing some washes in the pan and even Ryder Stone but uh, it depends how Antonio Pipkin and Johnny Menzel does and even Matt Schultz I I actually think there is some positive momentum being built for the Montreal Alouettes not going to make the playoffs this season I don't think they're good enough but you know there are a couple pieces away and I mean other than having John Bowman on defense who's been their longtime soldier I mean, they still have a fairly young team, but uh, I still think, you know, is Johnny, I mean, is Johnny Menzel going to actually pan out to be a starter, or, or is Mike Sherman and Davis Reed or the little guys you want to go forward with, but we'll see how the season plays out. I could see, you know, Montreal also winning seven games, being tied with Toronto at 7-11, but, uh, I mean, Montreal actually beat Toronto recently, so I... Right now, I have Toronto now down the fourth and Montreal up the third. Which now I got the Hamilton Tiger Cats up the second. Because the Hamilton Tiger Cats have definitely proven to be more like the second half Tiger Cats from last season as well as the first half when I made my original predictions that uh, I uh, split the difference. I, I mean, the jury was still out on his Jeremiah Mazzoli, you know, the great quarterback that he showed in the second half in the passing yards. And, Right now, he's actually second in the league in passing yards, only behind Mike Riley up the road from Calgary. And uh, he definitely has some playmakers like uh, Jalen Sanders and Alex Green has definitely produced a nice running game for them. And their defense is definitely stacked with Justin Capicotti and then Jamal Westerman, who's been a solid uh, defensive player that they got in the Johnny Menzel trade. And... Heck, they even got Landon Rice back from the Johnny Menzel trade because he got released by uh, by the uh, Montreal Alouettes. But uh, I think I think the Hamilton Tiger Cats have enough talent to uh, you know still stay well above Montreal and Toronto in the East and get second place sewn up. And uh, although the one thing with the Tiger Cats is they haven't been as strong at home the last couple seasons compared to when they first moved into Tim Hortons Field, also known as the Donut Box, but uh, I think the Hamilton Tiger Cats are talented enough and been in enough close games that uh, I can bump them up to second place in my original prediction and give them, a, I'd say, a 10-8 and eight record, which then that leaves the Ottawa Red Blacks left in the, in the East, and uh, I think the Ottawa Red Blacks look primed to be at least first in the, first in the, in the East, and uh, Definitely, you know, you got to say potential Grey Cup contenders that they can go off with one, anyone in the West, whoever winds up finishing, you know, out in the West if uh, all the Red Blacks happen to go to the Grey Cup. But they're definitely the top team in the in the, in the the East. I mean, Trevor Harris, he's top three in passing yards. And uh, they got William Powell, Brad Sinopoli, Greg Ellingson, Dante Spencer, who can also return, I mean, and then they found Lewis Ward, who, the uh, local product, who has always, he's done, has been making field goals, and, and you know, Kyrie C. Berry, despite, you know, having a controversial dirty hit, he's definitely been the leader on their defense, Anton Perneau, you know, I definitely like the Ottawa Red Blacks now to finish first in the East, and uh, potentially, uh, you know, get back to the Grey Cup for the second time in three years. So I'd like in Ottawa to be, let's say, around 11-7, and 12-6 range. Again, we'll see how they do against the West opponents going down the stretch here. But uh, it's clear that the Ottawa Red Blacks, even though they recently lost to an upstart Montreal team and, and been able, and the first time they played Montreal, they... They just grinded it out, but 
that's the one thing I think Ottawa has compared to, let's say, a Toronto and Montreal, is that I do think in the long run they definitely had the ability to, uh, you know, grind it out and win those close games. So, so yeah, the recap, I got Ottawa in first now, Hamilton in second, Montreal in third, but not in the playoff spot because the crossover is still going to come to play. And I'm just being bold with Montreal and Toronto and Toronto in fourth because uh, I think Toronto just needs to do a slight rebuild uh, after, you know, they surged in the second half last season. But the first half, how they look this season, they look worse in the first half than they did last season. And I don't see a, a second half surge from Toronto this year. So that's my Eastern predictions. So let's go to the West. shift out to the west here and as expected I, I had the BC Lions still finishing last in the uh, the west division and from what they've shown the, their ability to not close out games and take too many penalties I mean they, I still think the BC Lions are going to fall short in the tough west and I still like to put them down with a 7-11 record, which, I mean, it's a shame that Wally Bono was not going to be able to go out in the coaching sunset, but, I mean, he still accomplished a lot, and he's definitely going to be the coaching legend for the CFL, but, uh, I mean, the question mark still with BC Lions as well. I mean, they lost Manny Oshnell, so the Manny show was out for the rest of the season, but I say despite looking better, actually, with Travis Lule at the starting quarter, because Jonathan Jennings started as their starter, and has kind of been the de facto young starter. I still think Jonathan Jennings still has an upside, but he probably could benefit from a change. So uh, it's hard to say with the BC Lions. I mean, they got pieces. I mean, they they got Odell Willis in the off season when I think Edmonton he wound up Edmonton traded him to Montreal, and then Montreal flipped him to BC, and then they actually the BC Lions also got Sean Lemon from the Toronto Argonauts, which which is also the reason why. I got Toronto where they are, but I mean they got pieces. They, they still got Brian Burnham, Jeremiah Johnson, you know, as a big play guys on the offense. But uh, the BC Lions are in a lot of close games, but they uh, they lose those close games more than they win. And and I say the the one thing is they haven't been able to win on the road yet this year, and they've been tough at home, but they lost their last home game in a close fashion. So I still think the BC Lions are gonna fall behind in this tough west so I got them still in fifth place like I did in my original video and I'll still give them a 7-11 record which I think is fair so now I was pondering who I'm going to put in third and fourth here but I'm still going to put Saskatchewan at fourth but they'll make the playoffs in the crossover because I mean the Saskatchewan Roughriders I mean they still have a a deep young team but uh the only thing I gotta wonder with Saskatchewan at times is uh, their head coach Chris Jones. I mean, he's definitely proven he can. He has his weird, wacky ways of coaching, and uh, I mean, it all starts with him. And uh, I mean, I can kind of compare him to if you're a hockey fan, to Mike Keenan, where he tends to be Captain Hook with players and uh, has unorthodox ways of coaching. And uh, you know, sometimes I gotta say with Chris Jones, he has a you know, his ego was bare, bigger than the team, but uh, that being said, I mean, Saskatchewan definitely has a lot of pieces. I mean, Zach Calero was actually, from what I've seen, he actually looks close to being the uh, Zach Caleros that, uh, you know, led the Hamilton Tiger Cats to the Great Cup in 2014 and the first half of 2015. That was a big gamble on Saskatchewan's part to pull their eggs in him because, uh, you know, he hasn't had a track record of being durable the last couple of seasons, but then they still got Brandon Bidge on the backup, and uh, even David Watford showed some. Uh, but I still like Saskatchewan. I mean, Charleston Hughes, he's going to run away with the Defensive Player of the Year award because he already has 12 sacks, and he's definitely surfing away in Saskatchewan with his sack celebrations, and they still got Ed Ganey on the defense, who definitely... Is a ball hog with the defense with all the interceptions and 
Williams Lambert for the receivers definitely stepped up and I mean they still got Naaman Roosevelt and and I still think they have a nice running back with uh, Marcus Stigman and Trey Mason but uh, I just say Chris Jones has his unorthodox way of coaching and I still think the West ahead of him is still just a little better but I still think Saskatchewan they could be a threat in the playoffs uh, you know if they can you know commit could potentially be the finally that first crossover team that gets to the Grey Cup, but uh, we'll get to the bracket when we get there. In third place, or I say for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, I was still going to give them a 10 and 8 record. I mean, the one piece that they lost is, uh, you know, Duran Carter, but they released him and now he's off to Toronto. But I still like to give Saskatchewan a, a solid 10 and 8 record in, in the playoffs. And in third place, I still like putting the Winnipeg Blue Bombers there. I think they're slightly better than the uh, Saskatchewan Rough Riders, but not by much because I think uh, what the big difference is, with the, depending on what day it is, who has a better defense. And uh, I mean, what Edmonton or I mean uh, Winnipeg showing that their defense can be weaker at times compared to Saskatchewan, but. Uh, I still think the offense with Matt Nichols and Andrew Harris, he's definitely a beast, and he's definitely well leading the league and receive rushing yards, and he's also a threat on the receiving end, too, that, you know, he's definitely a, a candidate there with Brad Sinopoli in terms of being a top Canadian for the uh, for this season. But I like, I mean, I like what Matt Nichols still provides, and even Chris Strebler, but uh, I still like... Winnipeg to be a solid third place team. I mean the defense. I mean Jeff. They have Jeff Coat and Big Hill, but the uh, the defense still manages to give up big plays. And I know Winnipeg is still fresh off of playing Calgary, where they gave up over 500 yards offense. Which I mean Winnipeg one day can look like a strong team, and the next day they still look like a team that's mortal. So uh, I'm still gonna put Winnipeg as a solid you know, 11-7 and seven in the third place, just like my original video. But now here's where the changes come in in the West is I'm going to move Edmonton down to second place. I mean, I still, Edmonton is still, you know, a very strong team. I mean, Mike Rowley, he's definitely on his way for another MLP season and on pace to throw 6,000 yards receiving, or passing, I should say, well, it helps when you talk about receivers. You have Daryl Walker and Dekeel Williams, or Duke Williams, they call them. They're one and three in the receiving right now. And then C.J. Gable's been a nice nice addition from last season for the Edmonton Eskimos for their running game. And then on defense, they always leave with J.C. Sherritt and their sack leader, Boot, Boateng, if I said his name right. I mean, the Edmonton Eskimos are still... Uh, you got to still look at them as a cream of the crop, or definitely potential to be uh, a team that will be the cream of the crop. The only thing that's, I say, that's holding Edmonton back a little is the, uh, they sometimes tend to take too many penalties and discipline issues, and then sometimes Jason Moss, sometimes the emotions still come the better of him on the sidelines, but uh, I still like the Edmonton Eskimos. I mean, they still got many pieces on the team that, uh, that led him to the great big Grey Cup win in 2015, and Duke Williams has definitely been their breakout player. So uh, I'm going to say don't, don't mess around with the Edmonton Eskimos. But now with the record, I would still say let's give Edmonton a 12 and 6 record because I say they're definitely uh, better than the uh, Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, but. Uh, there's one team that's been much better, and that's my Calgary Stampeders. And I mean, I I originally put them in second place in the West Division because, not to show too much biasy, but I honestly thought this season the the Calgary Stampeders would take a little step back from the youth movement that they went through when they traded away Charleston Hughes, and there were big question marks about the return game when Roy Finch got in trouble at the law down south and. I don't think he's going to return, and uh, you know, with the running game and uh, young receivers. I mean, they didn't resign Marquay McDaniel, but uh, the Calgary Stampeders right now, 
they are definitely the cream of the crop. Obviously, we'll see how they play against the Empton Eskimos coming up on Labor Day, but uh, the big thing with the Calgary Stampeders has been their airtight defense, especially against the Eastern opponents, and uh, if we're going to likely, you know, win the Grey Cup, there'll be someone from the East, but uh, the Calgary Stampeders, their offense is definitely in the tops in the league. I mean, Bo Levi Mitchell, he's not leading the league in passing, but he's always a threat when he's on the field, and he's even shown that he can run run and scramble here, and uh, I mean, Kamar Jordan has definitely stepped up to be one of the top receivers in the league. He's actually second as of recording this video in receiving yards behind Darrell Walker and, and just ahead of Duke Williams up the road at Edmonton. And then Don Jackson, he's still fifth in the league in receiving despite the fact that he missed a month there. And Terry Williams, he's definitely emerged as a threat in the return, but uh, I mean, it's the airtight defense that the Gary Stan Peters have poised and, you know, watch out for guys like Jaguar Davis, James Waters. I mean, those are the, and even Emmanuel Davis, he's been a nice fit for the Calgary Stampeders. But they're now going to, I'm now going to put them first in the West. And I'd say I'll give them a 14 and 4 record. So now to recap the West Division, I got the Calgary Stampeders one, the Empton Eskimo second, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers third. Saskatchewan Rough Riders fourth, but making the playoffs in the crossover, and the BC Lions fifth. So now it's time to set up the bracket as we get on the road to the 106th Grey Cup in Edmonton. So with the Ottawa Red Blacks finishing first in the East, now in my new prediction, and the Calgary Stampeders finishing first in the West. Both of those teams will get a bye into their respective division finals. And they'll wait on the winner of their respective semifinals. Out East, since I have Hamilton in second, they'll be hosting the, the Eastern semifinal against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders because, as I mentioned, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders will have a much better record in my prediction and third place team, which is the Montreal Alouettes. So I got the Hamilton Tiger Cats hosting the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And out west, this is definitely going to be another heavyweight matchup. And unfortunately, one of these teams are going to be out early, having a too early Green Garbage Bay day as anticipated. But at the end of the day, only one team really has a happy Green Garbage Bay day, and that's the championship team. But I have a rematch between Edmonton and Winnipeg, but this time I got the Edmonton Eskimos hosting the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in the West semifinal. So now, when I look at these matchups right now, I'm going to say that the uh, Hamilton Tiger Cats will still beat the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in the Eastern semifinal, just because I think home field advantage will definitely play a role for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, despite the fact that they haven't, uh, you know, played as well at home. But I just figure Hamilton will just have that it factor with the with the guys. They have four big play receivers. And the kind of season Jeremiah Masoli is having, I like him better than or Zach Carreras or Brandon Bridges at this stage of the game. And the other running back that I forgot to mention that Hamilton has, although... He's not the premier running back, is, is John White, who was up at Edmonton, but uh, he his value is diminished because he's a great running back, but injuries, so I in this case, I have the Hamilton Tiger Cats being the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in the, the Eastern semifinal to be taken on the Ottawa Red Blacks. And the other thing that's tough for the crossover team is having to make a couple trips to Ontario you know, to be for potentially making another trip on the road to go to the Grey Cup. So then when you look at history, I think that that's going to also play a role. So if you go out west here, I mean, this is really going to be a heavyweight matchup here. And, I mean, I think the Empton Eskimos are at home, but there's going to have to be an upset here somewhere. And I actually got this feeling that if this happened, Edmonton, Winnipeg playing in the west 
semifinal and Empton will have the extra pressure knowing that the the big game is in their backyard this year and then penalties and that and their defense I mean I still think there could potentially be an upset for Winnipeg to get revenge on on the Winnip on the Winnipeg Blue Bombers on against the Empton Eskimos but uh, I still think the Empton Eskimos will pull this one out against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers but it's going to be a rough game which which is definitely what the Calgary Stampeders were like. So I have the Emden Eskimos pulling a close rough one out against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers at home to go down the road here in Calgary in the Western Final. So now my Final Four is I got the Ottawa Red Blacks playing, hosting the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And out west I got the Calgary Stampeders hosting the Emden Eskimos. And then when I'm looking at the the Easter final in this case, I definitely going to say the Ottawa Red Blacks are going to take the take the game against the Hamilton Tiger Cats based on our just on Trevor Harris and their big play receivers and and their running game with uh, William Powell and even Dante Spencer. You know, sometimes all it takes is one big play on special teams to uh, get them get them going and may make the difference in the game. So I'm going to say right now, I'd like the Ottawa Red Blacks to get back to the Grey Cup for the second time in three years. And going out west for the, this will be, what, be the fourth time in five years, we'll have yet another Battle of Alberta between the Calgary Stampeders and the Empton Eskimos to decide who's off to the Grey Cup and for the, you know, for the fifth time in the fifth year in a row, You'll have an Alberta team playing an Alberta Ontario team for the Grey Cup, but I'm gonna have to say, given history between, you know, the Battle of Alberta and the Western Final, I'm gonna have to say, and the defense, I'm gonna have to say, my Calgary Stampeders are gonna take this one and get back to the Grey Cup for the third year in a row, and Calgary will be playing the Ottawa Red Blacks for the Grey Cup 106 Grey Cup up at Edmonton. Now the Grey Cup. I think based on Calgary's defense and how they manhandled Ottawa this year and the fact that my team, fortunately, has broken my heart the last couple of seasons, I got to say the third time's a charm that, you know, my Calgary Stampeders will be the Grey Cup champions this season up in Edmonton. And also, if you look at the, uh, you know, the media poll, many, many are on board with me now saying that the, uh, the Calgary Stampeders are only going to win the West, but uh, they're going to win the Grey Cup this year. The third time's a charm. The Calgary Stampeders are going to be winning the Grey Cup this year up in Edmonton based on what I've seen in the first half. And, I mean, this team is definitely focused on, and they always say defense wins championships, and that's definitely been the, uh, the bigger factor this season. So that's my uh, predictions for... After revisiting my original predictions from the start of the season, for right now, I went from the M10 Eskimos winning the Grey Cup over the Toronto Argonauts. Now I'm saying it's going to be the Calgary Stampeders over the Ottawa Red Blacks, which uh, definitely gets some revenge on 2016, but the way the hell Calgary's matched up with Ottawa this season, I think this will be a huge win for Calgary as it won't be a close game. But uh, I think that's what I what I want to so I want a convincing win this time. For if if indeed my Calgary Stampeders will win their eighth championship. But anyway, I mean, if you enjoy everything I post on my my channel here, make sure you hit like, subscribe. I'll keep covering you know Calgary sports, Flames, Stampeders, Hitmen, Roughnecks, and then in my plan here is I'll keep doing my monthly recaps about my, my Calgary Stampeders this month. What my plan is, is after they played their last game in November, I'll do another recap about the CFL season, and uh, I actually will make preview videos of the of the semifinals, the finals, and, and I'm, I'm going to the Grey Cup this year, and how about I'll just do a preview video of the uh, Grey Cup when I'm up in Edmonton and right in my hotel room. So anyway, that's my CFL predictions now heading into Labor Day as uh, we'll see how the second half plays out. 
enjoy the enjoy the rest of the CFL season, and I'll see you at the next video.